Quit bugging me, Steve. You're such a dick. <laughs> I'm never doing this podcast again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now we're in the mood. Primarily Critical. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Primarily Critical, a podcast and movie club. If you haven't seen the film, we suggest that you do so before watching any further. I s- Sorry. Listening. It's, it's a podcast. You they I only know. listen. No. <laughs> Um, the reason that we you, you should not what, what did you just say? <laughs> oh yeah, you, okay. You should watch the film before you listen to this podcast because we have spoilers and we uh, we have trivia and opinions like crazy and we can't wait to share them today. A really weird dude hits on a girl while she's renting her porn. Yes. My name is Steve. I'm Laurie. And I'm John. Today we're covering good dick. Good dick. And we can blame name. John for this. Yes, we can. We can credit John for this one. Credit John for this. <laughs> yes. He picked it off Snag Film. Yes, off of Snag Films. Great app. Uh, you know, indie movies. Awesome. Good stuff. <laughs> Before we get into it, uh-huh. I, I feel like I'm interrupting you. Am I no, inter- no, okay. no. Okay. Please, go ahead. What did you think of Snag Films? Um, okay, the app itself? Yeah. It, it's glitchy. It's, is it glitchy? Yeah, is it glitchy? It's glitchy. It was glitchy for me too. Yeah, it was supposed to work with Chromecast. It didn't work. No, nope. Eh. No, it, 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 it's 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 it's. I have problems. We actually have to um, on my phone. I have to leaf through the movies. I can't do it on my box. Like I have an Android box. Mm-hmm. The Android box freezes if I try to do that. And there's we've had encountered numerous problems with it. Um, one of which is that once you've watched a movie, and then you think, oh, I want to watch it again. Uh, you try to watch it a second time, and it stays as at the very end. So you just you hit play, and it it, it finishes the movie. And you're like, what the heck? And it took us a while. To, Lori was you know smart enough to figure out what was going on there. So we had to do a little trick where you pause it for that split second. Then it comes on the screen. You pause it, and then you have to back it up to the beginning. So yeah. Anyways, what else do you have to say about the Snag Films? They break the movie. They have commercials. Snag yes. Films has commercials. And and the the movie is not designed to have commercials. There's not a, a convenient breaking point in the movie where they insert a commercial. Not for me, anyway. We we only have a commercial at the beginning. What? I never saw a commercial. Yeah, we don't get we get one. Do we even get a commercial at the beginning? I don't think so. I don't even think we get one at the beginning. But you know oh. the bar the bar shows those little spots on those it. little marks. Yeah, I, I had a commercial them. every one of those. It was it wasn't. They would stop the movie mid sentence, and, really? and, 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 and they would plug in a really loud commercial, and really? and then the, and then they would go back to the movie. Yeah. So why are we not getting this? I don't know. We're the lucky ones. Was were you watching on your iPhone? Maybe I no, I was watching it um, on my computer. On your computer? Yeah, on on through the website. <clears throat> well, isn't that strange? It's super strange. Yeah, because we don't we have none of this. Hmm. We, we had the glitch problems. I don't think any movie we've watched on it had a commercial. Maybe no. ours is old. Maybe the new ones have commercials. Well, we better stop from updating then. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I, but, I mean, I appreciate watching a movie for free. I well, will, that's I'll true. take commercials. So you'll take the commercials. I'll take commercials, yeah. definitely. Okay. All right. I, I, and that's not, that's not a deal breaker for me. Okay. Right. Good, because I, I plan on picking more from Snag Films. Okay. So, you know. Uh, Good. That's unfortunate that you're going to have to watch those commercials. Eh. Say la vie. Say la vie. <laughs> you know, you know I'll, I'll, I'll take commercials over not paying. Or right. I'll, I'll pay for something, but I better not have any freaking commercials. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's how I feel about my yeah. TV nowadays. I, I hear you. Yeah. And I'm in agreement, yeah. Yeah, the old days of paying for cable television and having commercials at the same time, it's, that's, that's dated. It's stupid. You can't double dip like that. Yeah, that's double dipping. That's <laughs> double dipping. Yeah. You can't charge people to no, have commercials right. and then charge people to have people watch commercials. Yeah. No. No, we've, sir. We've moved no, past sir. that. Yeah, we that's, moved beyond. That's right. Okay, good dick. Good dick. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Lori, do you have anything to say about this tirade of ours? <laughs> of, of paying for TV? No, I, I just I felt like we were excluding you. <laughs> oh, no, any TV is left to... John. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, yeah, please, start us off with a question. This is your okay, pick well, after all. Okay, well, all right. Okay, I think one thing, I just want to make a statement to start off with this, is that when you hear the title, 
good dick. It sounds horrible, right? Like, <laughs> I don't think anyone would think, oh, oh that's going to be a good movie, right? Like, it's, you think this is going to be a crap movie. But I think it actually is an intelligent title once you've seen the movie. Would you guys agree with that? Uh, it's a little on the nose. A little what? On the nose. A little on the nose. The only reason their relationship <laughs> progressed beyond a certain point yeah. is because he has some kind of an impressive penis. Mm, you're talking about winning the bet? Yeah. Well, okay. But I think it's a... I look at good dick as, <laughs> as a much b- bigger uh, statement. You like, see a bigger dick? <laughs> well, it's, okay. Like there's bad dicks out there. <laughs> yeah. And there's good... Right. Oh, right. okay. Yes. As, as like men. Men. Yes. men. yes. It's good like good men, men versus bad, bad men. men. Yes. Yes. And but see, she associated men as all like she she couldn't look at men as individuals. They all because they all had penises, dicks. They were evil. Right. Right. So, uh, but so she found but she found good dick. It didn't. She didn't. That's something she didn't believe that existed in the world. What do you think? What do you think, <laughs> Lori? Yeah. Do, do I agree with what you're yeah. saying? Um, yeah, that's my, that was my interpretation. That yeah, the it meant more like there's like bad dicks out there in terms of they're evil and yeah. they'll bring only trauma and suffering to your life. And but then she met someone who happened to have a penis who was good. Yeah. So, wow, yeah. you guys are Good far dick. more intellectual than me. See, well, <laughs> <laughs> I, I so for that reason, I think it's actually an appropriate title. Well, we didn't have title. the commercials. I think it's an appropriate title. I think I think it worked in this movie, and yet I found it funny because I almost never watched this movie just based on the title. Hmm. Why? Out of homophobia? Or? No, I just thought it'd be a crappy movie. A movie with titled "Good Dick." How good can that movie be? Well, Dick could be a man. It's like Goodwill yeah, Hunting. The, what if it was Good well, Dick okay. Hunting? Good Dick. Okay. What if that All was right. his name? Good yeah, Dick Hunting. <laughs> dick <Wow>. Hunting. <laughs> what, are you, what are you implying? <laughs> and now they don't actually have sex in the movie. Did 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 that feel like a false payoff for you? Um, you guys. <laughs> no, because to me this wasn't really a, about sex. I, it was. I mean, there was. You know, it was. It was about. I mean, in a way, in a, it was about uh, the problem surrounding sex, but it wasn't about the act itself. Well, no, I, I get that. I get yeah. that. But, I mean, we start the movie in a porn store. The movie is called Good Dick. Yeah. I somehow <laughs> expected sex. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and and the, the movie ended up being a lot darker than I expected as well. Yeah. Um, and, and in which case, Very may, much so, maybe, yeah. maybe sex would have been a bad move in the director's part. Yeah, at some point you realize it would have been a bad movie. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, the closest I think we got to sex was we're her dry humping. (laughs) While he ate his cereal. While he ate his cereal, (laughs) yeah. Yeah. You're you're struggling to remember this. I'm trying to remember. Okay. He's he's at the, in the morning. Oh, yes. Messed up hair. He's like eating his cereal. And she comes up behind him and uh, starts like pounding him from behind. And what is she saying to him while she does this? I'm coming. Dirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 She says, you like that or something? Like, it's, I don't know. It's bizarre. It was very weird. And then it's like, that was fun. Funny. Can I do that to you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, <laughs> I, I, I look at this movie as it's the most in depth, uh, you know, a movie I ever ventured down that road of the impact of sexual abuse uh, and and the implications of the aftermath of it. I don't think I've really ever seen a movie that ever even attempted to try to cover that that stuff uh, like this one did. And uh, I thought they did a fantastic job. I mean, I think, uh, you know... It did. Uh, I, I really enjoyed this movie. Um, they didn't involve the law at all, which is so true to life because there's so much of that stuff never actually gets dealt with by the police. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's more so like that. It's a relationship. That's where the damage is. That's where the, you know, yeah. 
they never address the dead aunt. True. I mean, he's, he's lied to her. Yeah. The entire time he's known her. Yeah, and um, it never comes out. And never comes out. Well, I think it does, because she it? says, I think I knew your aunt. She used to always say hello to me at the mailbox. And then later, she when they're apart, woman. after they've had the big fight, that lady walks by and, sh- and says hello. And she goes, oh, hello. And then she has that look on her face like, what the hell? I yeah. thought that was his aunt. Yeah. But they never address it between the two of them. I, I think the thing is that they had such bigger life issues going on that a, uh, in the end, a lie like that wouldn't have mattered. You know what I mean? It, it didn't need to be addressed because I think for for average couples, a lie is a lie like that might be a big deal. It's like, oh my God, he's he lied to me about something like that. But they dealt with so many such deeper problems that it really doesn't. I don't think it would matter to her in the end if if she found out that he was lying about that because she already, you know. She, tr- she for the first time in life, she trusts a man. And I mean, in a way that, you know, it be, is, supersedes all that little stuff. You know, maybe that's just my take, but. Uh, it's true. It could have gone very, very bad for him, though. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, certainly at points. Like yeah. when, when he's at the point when he's trying to early on, when he's trying to earn her trust. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That could have been very damaging. Yeah. So it's not what you say. It's when you say it. <laughs> that's that's what we that's what I've learned from this situation. One of the things I surprisingly enjoyed about this movie, and I can go into other things after, but um, generally, I'm disappointed in character movies where you feel like you just get thrown into some circumstance you you don't know anything about them. I have trouble having any attachment to the character. Mm -hmm. And I actually felt like this movie, I didn't have that problem. And I really liked that they let more tidbits about the characters come out later. Slowly. And And it really allowed you to focus and, and wonder too, just like he would like, what the heck happened to this girl? Like, why is she crazy like that? You know, Mm -hmm. and him, He's sleeping in his car. You don't really know why. And, and normally that would drive me nuts, but it actually didn't this time. I, mm. I liked the path that it took for that. Well, I thought they did a very good job of, like, you hit the point where you're going, why would this guy not just give up on this girl? Like, she just clearly doesn't like him. You know, like, you're thinking, like, why doesn't he just, like, like forget her? You know, she's... But then you realize that he's not... Like they give you enough that you realize he's fucked up too, right? Like he's got problems. He doesn't have his life together. He's struggling too. He's sleeping in his car. You know, he was, you find out that, oh, he used to be a drug user, you know, and all that. So suddenly you realize, oh, well, that makes sense. You know, it was enough to give you that makes sense why this guy's so motivated because he's not, you know, he has, he's, he's uh, experienced with the hardships of life and that he can sympathize and find compassion for someone else who's really screwed up, you know? And I thought they did that in a wonderful way. It was just like, uh, in the beginning, you just take him as just a young guy working at a video store uh, and that he's probably just an idiot, you know, like your average teenage moron, right? <laughs> um, but but you, you realize they just give you enough that he, he starts evolving as a character too. Like you say, I thought it was excellent character, character building. Like you uh, got enough at the right times just to build uh, both these characters up in, a, in an awesome way. So. Oh, I'm nodding here like people see me. <laughs> so you you agree with this, I so totally yeah. agree I totally yeah. agree very very well put sir uh, I was going to address the homeless angle but I mean he's he's, he's struggling in a lot of ways mm. uh, I have an I, an alternate question um, and maybe this is takes it a little away from being serious why are there four video store employees I, <laughs> at that store at all you know, times? <laughs> I thought the same thing. I thought like, okay. And then I try to think of any video. Have I ever seen this? And there's only one video store that I can think of. That was, and that was Movie Village in Winnipeg here where we live. Uh, there was always a bunch of employees there. But that was a huge hub for our city. Like that was, you would never walk in there at the, when it's heyday. Because I'm assuming this is back somewhere because video stores pretty much don't exist anymore right so you got to go i don't know when this was exactly set but i would say somewhere 90s maybe 
there, there might still be some video stores. Who knows? Yeah, there might still be. But uh, yeah, I know you're right. It, 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 there's it, it, for that kind of like the video store I'm talking about, Movie Village. All, there was always about f- at least five customers on a. That would be a slow moment, but usually up to twenty. It was like a library. You know what I mean? It was a big right. hub for people to go to look at movies. This place, it's empty all the time. And somehow they're paying four employees to sit around an empty movie store, you know? Well, they did kind of address it. One of the guys comes in on his day off. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but it's still, there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of warm bodies in that store that did not need getting paid. Well, yeah. Oh. Lord, did the, did the movie employee situation bother you at all? <laughs> <laughs> no, although John did say he... He'd love to have a job where he could just sit around with his buddies all day. And, mm-hmm. Yeah, it seemed know. like a dream job. You might have to live in your car to have it, but, uh, yeah. so, you know. Wouldn't pay very well, but, man, that would be fun. My first job was ripping tickets for the movie theater. Really? Eh? I loved mm-hmm. it. If I could do that for a living, yeah, be great. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have a friend that started out that way, and he's now uh, the... I, last I heard, he was, like, Western manager for, of Canada for Cineplex Odeon. He just, oh, really? the first job, and he just stayed with it, and uh, big big cheese now. Yeah. So she uh, got raped by her dad, right? Yes. That's the idea? Tom uh, Arnold. Tom Arnold. Pig. I did not expect Tom Arnold. Yeah. He was, he, was, he was a surprise for me. But, I mean, as soon as we're introduced to him, like it, and he's, like, a little overly nice yeah, and um, almost apologetic, <laughs> and and yeah, and you see her demeanor. That to me, that's what kind of tipped me off. Is like she's all like, "Hi, daddy!" Like you know, like she she suddenly turns into this. She's been this very aggressive, you know, recluse bitch through the whole movie, yeah. and then suddenly she's just trying to play the sweet little miss, you know, innocent girl. You realize there's something wrong with this relationship, or right? just by her demeanor too, you know. I didn't see her playing, trying to play a sweet, innocent girl. I saw her trying to gather strength and look in control of herself when she went in. But she, she certainly didn't approach her dad with the dominate, dominating way she approached... Uh, I don't even know his name. They don't have names. The woman, the man. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> um you know, like her, uh, the way she approached the man or her, her boyfriend or whatever, uh, she would just take authority immediately. Uh, so that's, you know, that's kind of how we got used to her. But she certainly didn't take that demeanor into me. Yeah, but I dad. think that's the point. Yeah. The point is it damages you so much that, mm-hmm. you know, while people don't often either get the chance to confront their abuser or have to live with them, yeah. Um, it's going to be largely the other people who pay yeah. because you've been broken. You've been broken by this person. And I think she went in there and tried to look together. Yes. And that, yes, there was some element of maybe going back to being that little girl who sat mm. good like she was supposed to. And But I don't think she tried to play sweet and innocent. I think True. she she wanted to look together. Yeah. And, she looked terrified. She did. Yeah, she looked terrified. Yeah. It's a movie that starts off so goofy, and there's so many yeah. funny little moments, and then it just goes... Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it gets oh very my God. dark. Yeah. yeah. I need a break because I'm getting depressed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I thought, I thought both, like, they played their parts phenomenally. Like, and, and it's... I mean, they are a couple in real life. Um, and I just, I, 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 it kind of blew me away that uh, they were because the fact that they could play such pretty, I, I would say her especially was a tough role. Like, I don't think, he, he, he just sort of had to keep his boyhood charm and, and persistence. But uh, her to, to change, I don't know, it was just, it was, a, it was a dark character to play and she did it really well. Like, I didn't, I bought into it completely, you know. I didn't, it wasn't a moment I'm going like, yeah, I'm going, nice try, you know. <laughs> yeah. I found I'm it, not buying what you're selling. Yeah. <laughs> I found it very believable. Uh, 
maybe not that he was bigger than eight inches, but, um, you know, for, aside from that, yeah. I found her character um, very, very believable. Yeah. Um, you know, I want to keep it light, but I did, I did see yeah. um, just women, like, obviously not abused like that, but... You know, by the time the average girl gets out of high school, she's pretty jaded already towards a lot of guys. Yeah. And you get any deeper or worse type of violation that goes on. Yeah. And you watch it. I mean, we have daughters. You yeah. see it. You see, yeah. you know. And so I found it very believable that something that could have gone to that extent would have that severe yeah. of an impact on on your life. And I wondered, and this would be my question. Um, you don't get the sense, like obviously she's trying to be in control. She's got her own little environment that she controls. But when he first comes in, it's kind of messy. You know, yeah. she does go to the porn store. She does go out to the ice skating rink with him. But she puts the bags on her hands when she touches the movies. Yeah. So she doesn't, you don't have the impression that she's a germaphobe. Yeah. So... It leaves you, left me to assume that just the act of sex alone felt so dirty in dirty. her mind oh, that she had to put the baggies on to touch the disc. Because not to touch the outside of the case yeah. or to hold his hand out in public, it was the disc. That's interesting. I never made that connection. I did kind of wonder... Like Why what, is, what's the yeah, you, you're, you're okay to have a messy apartment all that. You're, but yeah, you, what's with just the moon? Interesting. <laughs> Protection from the filth, the dirty. Uh, from what I understand, this this movie got some recognition and uh, some awards and whatever else. Mm -hmm. um, well deserved, I think. I think mm -hmm. it was a really well told story. Um, hopefully, Mariana Polka wasn't intimately in, um, experienced it's, with the yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it makes you wonder because it was so compelling. You think, wow, is this uh, autobiographical? Audi autobiograph? How would I say Aut that? Auto autobiographical. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was looking for. <laughs> yeah. I got a question. Please. Um, first of all, was Eric, I think that's his name, is that, uh, yeah, was Eric a manager or an owner of the video store? Was, was your guy's impression, or is he just another employee? I think he's the owner. I think he's the owner? Well, I definitely don't think he's another em employee because he seemed to have his own little office when Mamouche was calling okay. or whatever. He was in his office. Yeah, that's the impression I get. So <clears throat> this is my next, this leads to my next question. So why was Eric so hard on him about being homeless? I think it's because he was concerned that he was using again. And that's where his money was going. Okay. Instead but we of know as the viewing audience that he wasn't using again. So we could say, well, probably because he can't afford to get a place, maybe. <laughs> so maybe Eric should give him a fucking raise. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's paying three other people to sit there. Sit there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, I, I, I'm thinking, okay, this guy, he's not using. So why is he living in his car? I think, well, probably because he just works at video, so he can't afford to, right? I mean, and yet this guy's just coming down on him bad. Like, well, show well, me your place. Show me your place. So, you know, I'm like, you know. I view it as one of those tidbits of the character's history we don't get to see. Maybe he, when he was using, he was really yeah. good at hiding it. Yeah. You know, maybe he straightened up Fair to enough. come to work. Yeah. And, you know, this guy cares about him. And it seems really fishy to him that suddenly he can't see where he lives and... Yeah. Maybe it all got cut in editing. Maybe they maybe they had it all laid out, yeah. you know, and then it was like, shit, the movie's yeah. too long. Too we long. Need, we got to cut this out. We got to cut all this <laughs> yeah. out, and and it 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 has nothing to do with the woman who is arguably the center the center of this story. Know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be, and I mean, it was an important scene, like you guys, were, were, like you were saying, is that it, it's important that we got to know that he was a user and that he had a problem. He was probably. You know, that was a big character building moment. Uh, and so, uh, so yeah, I mean, it was an important scene. I just thought, wow, he's coming down hard on him. Like, you know, this poor guy's living in a car and now this is. Well, they his came down hard on the other guy who didn't know where the clitoris like, was. 
<laughs> what? Oh, the clitoris. They yeah. came down pretty hard on him too. <laughs> What's that? What well, was that movie called? I don't know. Guys do that. Zen pussy. <laughs> Zen pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Zen Pussy, man. I wonder if that's a real movie. I we like, should, well, I like we should cover that in Primarily Critical. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, we're uh, not covering Zen Pussy. Zen no. Pussy. I, I don't think so. <laughs> well, we might have hit a low at that point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know you've run out of material when. Yeah. And Okay. The random... I felt it was random... When that guy knocks on his window and says, you can't sleep here in this parking lot. Yeah. You know, blah, blah, blah. And then he's like, I'm the assistant manager. Yeah. Well, who cares? Yeah, who fucking cares? What is that? Like, usually when you see that, like in Pretty Woman, um, he's like, I'm the manager of this hotel. He's trying to kiss ass a bit, right? Mm -hmm. And in this, this, I don't even know why that guy said that. I'm the assistant manager. Presumed authority. Maybe they're trying to talk about presumed authority. Yeah, like, yeah. like um, th- this this guy runs a movie store, therefore he thinks he has a say in your life. You know, this guy uh, runs this other stores where he says he, he thinks he has a say over where you can sleep, sleep even yeah. if it's in your car. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, maybe I'm stretching. Well, no, no, I, I see that. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, I agree with that. I, I liked how he responded. He's like, yeah, yeah, I see that right on your text. <laughs> <laughs> so that was. Uh, John Rinner's boy. Was it? Yep. Shut up. I'm not kidding you. That's uh, that's his boy. And uh, there was... Uh, boy, I, re- I read a bit about it. I don't remember if it was around this time it was released, but uh, that uh, Jason Ritter, yeah. that's, uh, he lost his dad and I think both his grandparents all within a year. Really? Yeah. And I don't know if that was... Before this movie came out, after this movie came out, I don't know, but yeah, good John God, Rard. Jack what? Jack Tripper was that same? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jack Tripper. Uh, yeah. Well, first impression, I like Jason more, mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but I, I, I was never a big fan of John Ritter. But yeah, well, I you know what? I actually saw some similarities once I figured that. I saw, I'm like, oh yeah, I can see some physical. Uh, Characteristics that yeah, seems short, doesn't he? Yeah, he's 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 shorter than his dad. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with that. Mom must have been short. Uh, yeah, I had no idea. Jason Jason Ritter was the son of John Ritter. Yeah, it's true. And uh, and they're a couple. We already covered that, right? You you've you've done your legwork for this. Well, you know, I a little bit. Uh. Yeah. Should we get into these little known facts? I'm sure. afraid uh, the, we don't have a lot, the pickings are slim. Mm-hmm. Lori, I think you should read one. <laughs> the little known facts. Bryce Dallas Howard and Seth Gable, credited as kissing woman and kissing man, are married in real life. Mm. That was the couple in the video store. Yeah. The one that disgusted. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Um, a directorial and fame film debut of uh, Mariana Polka. Good for her. Good for her. Home run. Yeah, absolutely. Knocked it out of the Home park. Uh, you know, Keep I mean, up this, the good work. This is one of the ones too where I, I just love the fact that we we had what uh, three or well we had the video store, her apartment, and you know some street scenes, but that's it. In the office, or her dad worked. But yeah. yeah, but I mean, yeah, her office. But I mean, it's like, once again, you got a low budget, but you get good characters and a good story. That's all you need for a great movie, you know? And uh, to me, that's the, they make the best movies, you know? I think this is one of the great movies. It is. Hopefully. Keeps winning lots and lots of more awards. Uh, Lori, this is your last episode with Primarily Critical. It's, it is. It's been fun having you on. Uh, how how was your experience? <laughs> it was good. Okay, good. It was good. good. <laughs> See? <laughs> <laughs> I've done enough time with, with John and the boys to be comfortable enough to be, you know. Yeah. It was good. Awesome. Awesome. Well, it was awesome having you. Um, and uh, next week, Monday at noon, our movie pick will be up on the list. 
um, in, on primarilycritical.com. Please enjoy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Primarily.